الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده والنبي والرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم beginning the khutbah al juma praising allah and walhamdulillah thumma walhamdulillah thanking allah azza wa jal for so many gifts we cannot count them so many gifts that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us and at this particular moment none of us who are present can in any way forget that we are at the eve the dawn of an amazingly powerful time for our lives but alhamdulillah a powerful moment for the entire world we are approaching the month of ramadan and i want to share with you bi'idhnillah that maybe from this month we can acquire something that will cause us when we enter it if allah allows us to live to enter it that we will leave the month of ramadan with a new power bi'idhnillah we will leave with something alhamdulillah that will make us better than we used to be if you think about it for a moment there are no accidents in the quran maybe other people have speech and they make a mistake in their speech i'm not going to mention any names but alhamdulillah the quran doesn't have a mistake in its language and allah even though allah revealed the quran to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the month of ramadan from the beginning to the end that allah chose over 23 years to parse out the sections of the quran to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that he would share it with his companions at times and at places that would empower them you see for us we have the quran and because we have from beginning to end we don't necessarily feel it there are times and places and circumstances that when the words of the quran were revealed the companions felt empowered they felt bold they felt encouraged Allah begins the Quran saying iqra bismi Allah begins by saying read in the name of Allah read in the name of Allah who created you Allah's reminding the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's in a cave Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq I created you khalaq al insana min alaq I created you from this almost nothing Now you Muhammad you're in a cave and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in the cave and he's not in the cave because he's worried about himself He's not in the cave because he's afraid that the Quraysh are Islamophobic. He's not in the cave because he's hiding out. He's not in some kind of a uh, retreat. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in the cave seeking some guidance from Allah looking out if anybody has ever been 
to, to, to Mecca and you go into the cave, Ghartawr. You look down, you can see Mecca. The Prophet salam, is looking down into Mecca and asking Allah, what am I going to do with these people? Ya Rabb, what, what can I do? We know his life as, as a man before his prophethood. That he's known as Alameen. He's known in that community as a person who is trustworthy. We know that the son of the Prophet Sallallahu his life in his seerah, we know when there was corruption, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam provides guidance in al fudul He comes from a noble family even though he's an orphan. He's not in the cave because he's trying to fix some problem with himself. And Allah gives him something to go back to his people with. Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Go back and tell the people. Oh Muhammad, use the voice that I'm giving you to proclaim to them that there is knowledge that they don't have. There is guidance that they can acquire on their own. They need al huda They need this book. And if they have it, you will be able to transform their society from what it is to what Allah wants it to be. The power in that experience, those words, revealed to the Prophet Wasallam that he would then go down and tell his people, organizing them friend by friend, neighbor by neighbor, day by day, calling them, alhamdulillah, not to see the city of Mecca as it is, but to envision a Mecca that is muqarramah. A Mecca that's going to be free of idolatry, it's going to be free of slavery, it's going to be free of racism, it's going to be free of sexism, it's going to be free of the exploitation of the poor by the rich. That the Prophet وسلم, is going to go to that society and provide them the guidance to transform that into a life, a way of life, a deen that would be acceptable to Allah. That this idea came down in the month of Ramadan. I'm going to challenge you and I because Allah gave us this gift. And I know maybe in Northern Virginia when the Hilal of the new month is cited and for you and I it's the month of Ramadan for everybody else it'll still be May and you'll think you're walking around and it's May and people will be eating and drinking they'll be going about their business as if it's any other day Except you know that Allah has created this wonderful opportunity in order for us to be able to transform ourselves, our family, our community, our society, our world. In the month of Ramadan, you're going to do some amazing things. You're going to read more Quran than you read all year. You're going to pray more than you prayed all year. You're going to give more zakat than you gave all year. You're going to study, memorize. You're going to seek forgiveness. You're going to do everything that you can do in the month of Ramadan if you live there, if you live to get there. 
It's tremendous power that Allah will provide to you from that month. Words that will be transformative. A vision of the world different than the vision of the world that your neighbors believe in today. If your neighbor is watching television, your neighbor thinks that we can't all live together. Your neighbor thinks if they watch that FAUX news, they think that if you're a Muslim, probably uh, you're secretly something other than a nice person. See how I said that? Why? Because they don't know a Muslim. Why don't they know a Muslim? I'm talking about your neighbor. Because you never said to him, Ikra, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Halak. You never said to him, Look, I got something for you to read. Not from outer space, from me talking to my neighbor. The Prophet, وسلم, Allah had to tell him, uh, probably, I would say, You need to cool out. Stop being worried. You're going to every single person that you know, you're killing yourself trying to make dawah. Don't worry, Allah got this. That's the problem of the Prophet Wasallam. Our problem is the opposite. We're not killing ourselves to tell our neighbor. Tell your neighbor, subhanAllah. Oh neighbor, do you know on Friday, look in the sky, you're going to see that the moon is going to be gone and it's going to be a new moon Friday. They have full access to it. They don't need Wi-Fi or nothing. Tell them, alhamdulillah, what's happening. Because without you, they won't know. I don't want you to turn the masjid in Ramadan into the cave. Where you go into the cave every night and you, and you make tajud. You staying, well, alhamdulillah, all night, well, alhamdulillah, taught away a prayer every night. And it's a cave. I'm inviting you, subhanAllah. Invite your neighbor like the Prophet وسلم, invited his neighbor. And then tell the neighbor what it's all about. That there's some words that the Prophet وسلم, was given from Allah. They have power. There's a vision of how society should be that's outlined in the Quran. Justice, equality, freedom. And then go into action. Wallahi, I can tell you, maybe, I don't know, maybe. Maybe when I was younger, if you saw me in the parking lot at night, you might be afraid. I said, who's that black man in the parking lot over there by my car? He doesn't look like he's Muslim. What's he doing here? You'd be nervous. Now you're not nervous anymore because you say, so, oh, oh, that's the Muslim brother right there. He's not black anymore. He's Muslim. He's probably coming to pray. He's not coming to break in my car. How did I get here? The Hajar Aswad didn't fall out of the sky and hit me in the head. Somebody said to me, Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi halaq. Halaq al insana min alaq. Ikra wa rabbuka al akram. Alladhi allama bil qalam. Allah has things to teach you, man. Why don't you come and get on in with the program? And it'll make society better. It'll actually make society great again, Tariq. For us, alhamdulillah, I don't want you to have a Ramadan which is ordinary. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us 
that you have this year a Ramadan that's extraordinary. That alhamdulillah, when you leave the month of Ramadan, you will have experienced something that subhanallah, it will empower you. Like Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu and they say he used to. If he's going down the, the alley one way, shaitan goes the other way. Because there's a certain power that comes from the knowledge, from the experience, from the commitment to this deen that when others see it, subhanAllah, they will either be drawn to it because they like the light of Allah or they will run because they are afraid of what will happen if they are on the wrong side of Allah's justice. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam wa rasooli kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ma'in mabad I I was listening the other day to a good friend of mine and he was given a lecture. And, you know, he said, in the month of Ramadan, there's one night, and Allah chose to use a particular word to describe this layl. Describing it as Laylatul Qadr. That there's something, I mean, it could have been, Allah could have called anything. But to use the word Qadr, people translate it as power, excellence. There's something about the event of, of descending this Quran that should empower us. You know, we're reminded, Allah reminds us, are the people who have knowledge like the people who don't have knowledge? They're not equal. SubhanAllah, we have the Quran which ought to give us power. It ought to empower us. It makes us act differently. It gives us courage in the face of opposition. See, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they would react to the Quran like it's news. They want to know, oh, Messenger of Allah, what's going to be our future? Are we going to be decimated by our enemies or are we going to succeed? Allah says, <laughs> Allah says When is the victory going to come? You want to know when we're going to be strong. When you see people coming and they're accepting this deen, we're going to win. They were like, oh, alhamdulillah, because we, we were worried. We saw a lot of people on Islamophobia not liking us. We want to know what our, the end of our affair is. If you start looking at the Quran for news, and not the, the internet for news, you look in the Quran for news, I have good news for you. Our circumstance is going to be beautiful. Jazaa'uhum inda rabbihim jannatu adnin tajri min tahti al haru halidina fiha abada. I'm going to live in Jannah forever. All I have to do is what? Inna ladhina amanu wa amalu salihat. For us, walhamdulillah, this is an encouragement. It should empower us. I would like to encourage you to help us to acquire some power in this community. This Sunday, through our organizing in this community, the chairman of the Board of County Supervisors, we have had meetings with them to say, come to Dar Hijra because we have some issues as Muslims who live in this community. One of our issues 
Our children, most of them go to public school. I know Mohammed Kabria, some of them, they come on the weekend. They come for fast and learn on Thursday. They come to Rise and Soul. They come to the weekend Quranic school. But most of them, maybe 97% of Muslim children, go to Fairfax County Public School. So what are we going to do? If we have enough power, we can tell the school board we need some changes to accommodate Muslim children who are in the public schools. Just like you accommodate Jewish children, you should accommodate other children. You have Christmas, what about Eid? So we had a meeting with the chairman of the school board, Sandy Evans. I said, Sandy Evans, do you know Muslim children in school? It's going to be Ramadan. School will still be in. Do Muslim children have to sit in the cafeteria while other children eat while they're fasting? Don't they know it's Ramadan? And we have enough power to compel them to meet with us. So we said we also need to have a meeting with the superintendent of schools. Because we don't just want it to be Jeb Stewart has something, but T.C. Uh, uh, Williams doesn't have it, or Marshall High School doesn't have the accommodation. The whole system is ramming out everywhere. We want... And we heard from our young people. They said, Imam, we can't come out of school for Juma. We want to have Juma in our school. There's just 10 or 15 or 20 of us. But if we join together. So the superintendent of schools and the chairman of the school board said, we'll come to Don Hidra. And we'll meet with your community. And we told them we're going to bring those who are joining with us in voice, Virginians organized for interfaith communion, we're going to bring them all together to say we all are going to stand together as a community to make sure that Muslim children have the same civil rights and civil liberties that everybody else has to practice their religion freely. And we're going to ask you to make your commitment to us, not in the back office, you know how that happens sometimes. You meet in the back and they tell you everything's going to be okay. And then nothing happens. So we told them we'll have about four or 500 people on Sunday at Dal Hijra this Sunday. 3.30 to 5 o'clock. And we're going to ask you, school board, superintendent of schools, county supervisor, to commit in public to accommodate Muslim children in Ramadan, to accommodate Juma, to accommodate daily Salah, to make sure our girls can wear the proper clothing they want to wear when they have athletics. He said, all right, Imam, you're really pushing it now. I said, that's what we got to do. They said, all right, well, we'll be there. But what they're really saying is, you better make sure your people are there. Because if they show up to, a, to an empty room, then they know where the real power isn't. That, alhamdulillah, we have to show up with our power. So, alhamdulillah, I'm inviting you. No, I'm not inviting you. I'm challenging you to come and join us, whether you have children in school or not. Because all of these children are our children. This Sunday, 3.30, right here in this room, until 5 o'clock. To say that we stand with our children, so that they can get the benefit of Ramadan, that it might empower them to become better Muslims. Brothers and sisters, I, you know, I apologize. It's time to end. And uh, I know you have to get back to your, to your thing, some of you.
So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on to, and to replace the time that we've taken with something better. Allahumma dina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt, wa tawalana fi man tawalayt. O oh Allah, we pray, walhamdulillah, that you might bless us in our prayers. O oh Allah, that you might accept from us our prayers and our fasting and our standing in the night. O oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, that you forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask that you increase us in love for you and love for each other, ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask that you grant us the power, subhanallah, that we might change this world, bi'idnillah, to be a pleasure to you, ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, rabbana atina fi dunya hasnatan, wa fi l'akhirati hasnatan, wa qina adhab al-nar, akhinna jannata ma abrar. Ya Allah, we pray, walhamdulillah, that you might cause us to live to see the month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, that you might cause us, walhamdulillah, to stand in prayer in the month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, that we be standing in Laylatul Qadr, Hayrin min alfi shahr. Ya Allah, that you give us a lifetime of sins, forgiven, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, that you might accept all of our good deeds, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, that we, walhamdulillah, would have the reward of your Jannah ma'abrar. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on our children, Ya Allah who are living in fear and anxiety, Ya Allah. Empower them, Ya Allah, that they will feel strong in their faith, Ya Allah. That they can stand and withstand, alhamdulillah, the challenges of our day. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy on those who are suffering, Ya Allah, with difficulties around the corner, Ya Allah, or around the world. O oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, Allahumma inta salam wa minka salam wa tabarak the yadal jalali wa ikram. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy on those who are living in places of oppression, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, that you would have mercy on them, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, for your mercy and your peace on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on his family and on his companions and on all of the anbiya, Ya Allah, and those who follow the way of your haq, Ya Allah, until the day of judgment. Ameen. Aqulu qali hadha astaghfirullah wa alaykum akim salat.